it all in together and uh, begin to study yesterday and, and uh, begin to look some words up. And uh, if you want to read with us, though, when we at the fourth chapter of the book of James, we'll read two verses there, and uh, then we'll flip over to the twelfth chapter of the book of Romans. You know, just read one or two verses there. And uh, God be our helper. We'll, we'll uh, try to get, get, get what's on our heart off. And uh, I pray this morning, though, that you'll pray for us most of all. I pray that you'll pray for yourself and pray for your neighbor. That uh, somebody, uh, so, so somebody's going to need this. I, I believe that. And. Uh, Chapter 4 in the book of James, and then chapter 12 in the book of Romans. Uh, I'm satisfied. I, I've probably preached this before. i preached from these verses before. I know I've never preached this thought before here, but uh, I do pray that you'll pray for us. And, uh, pr- pray, for, pray for somebody to get what they stand in need of. <clears throat> in the fourth chapter of the book of James, we're going to read the, the verse number 7 and verse number 8, and then uh, we'll flip over to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans and read verse number 1 and 2. The Bible says this in James chapter 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands ye sinners and purify your hearts ye double minded. In the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, the Bible says this, I beseech you therefore brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that's as far as I want to read this morning. You please pray for us just for a few minutes. I'll try not to tax your patience. I know we're... Right here at 1130 now, but uh, if God will be our helper, uh, I want to try to go through these verses just for a few minutes and try to help us and try to encourage us to some things of the Lord. And uh, I begin to think and begin to ponder though, and and as I begin to study uh, and begin to dig in the Word of God yesterday and this morning, begin to pray uh, about this hour, you you, uh, have to understand that... uh, I, I see things differently than some folks do, and I uh, don't always get things uh, the way that other folks do, but uh, the way that I get it works for me. And uh, we see, though, here in the book of James, there in the fourth chapter, uh, the Bible says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. And I begin to look up that word, submit. And uh, to, to, if for you, you dictionary people and you folks that are smarter than me, you may already know what the basic concept of that word is, uh, but it means to cease resistance, to yield authority, and to defer. It's some words that they use and some synonyms uh, that, that you could use to, for the word submit uh, is things like bow, bow concede, uh, give in, or surrender. And uh, I begin to ponder about a song Uh, that we sing sometimes, and it's there in the hymn book, uh, page 354, maybe it is when I looked it up, and uh, it's called, I Surrender All. And uh, I begin to ponder on that thought, and that text of, uh, and that thought this morning, this weekend, and, and begin to think, though, how the word submit means to surrender. And uh, listen, I want to say this, that uh, uh, if we're ever going to have a good Christian life and have a, a peace and fellowship with the Lord, we must therefore first surrender uh, all things unto God. And, and, and listen, I believe it like this, that, uh, it, it, that we can be saved individuals and, and not truly be surrendered unto the Lord. And, and I believe it like this, that the Bible, the book of Job says, uh, that if you're acquainted with Him, uh, he'll be, and that you'll be at peace. And uh, uh, So I believe that when we truly submit and surrender under the will of God, under the authority of God, uh, we'll truly be at peace with ourselves. And uh, uh, you pray just for a few minutes, and I'll get loose. But uh, I, I begin to think, though the Bible says, submit yourself, uh, therefore, to God. And, uh, and can I say this real quick, that... Uh, 
Uh, I believe the church uh, has the authority for the Bible. The Bible says the church uh, is the body of Christ. And, uh, I believe that there's a lot of things that uh, maybe we ought to submit to, but most of all, uh, we ought to submit to the authority and the power uh, of an all-living Savior and, and go after that. Amen. Uh, I just believe that. Uh, listen, I believe that uh, uh, the church was set up and, and ordained by the blood of Jesus and, and that we've got certain things that we must uh, do, but I'll say this, that uh, uh, most of all, uh, we ought to submit to the authority uh, of the Lord. We ought to just uh, surrender everything in our life. And, uh, and I'm going to say this, that uh, we've got a lot of Christians in this folks of life. And, uh, we've got a lot of folks in, in this folks of the world that uh, they'll surrender to everything else. Uh, they'll surrender to every kind of sin. Uh, they'll surrender to everything that anybody else will say. Uh, but they'll never surrender to the authority of God. Uh, can I say this? If we want a true victory in our lives and uh, uh, we want to see truly see the church grow and we want to truly grow closer to God uh, we must truly surrender everything to him amen, amen. I believe that and, and uh, so we find though in the book of in the book of, uh, of Romans the Bible says I beseech you therefore brethren and by the mercies of God and there's there's a little saying that uh, that I begin to think of and uh, begin to begin to study out and, uh, if we find in that text of scriptures and uh, for, for you Bible writers and you folks that uh, write everything down this is what I want you to remember uh, out of this text of scriptures and uh, is take me uh, break me and make me uh, now listen and if you're going to write something down, I want you to write down, take me, break me, and make me. Amen. And we find all that within this first verse in the book of Romans. And you pray and we're going to get loose. And the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. And that's the very first thing that we've got to let the, God, let the Lord take us and we've got to present our bodies uh, under the Lord. And listen, I uh, said it just a minute ago that uh, uh, we've got a lot of saved individuals and we've got a lot of people uh, that are saved and, and all that stuff. Uh, but they're not never truly surrendered uh, under the authority and the leadership of God. And, and listen, I'm not trying to beat on us this evening. I, I'm trying to help us today and let us to realize uh, that first off, we've got to be willing uh, to let God take us and mold us and use us and do exactly what he says. Now listen, that means to be in utmost obedience to the Lord. That means don't say it, I will if you'll do this or I will but we need to get that word out of our vocabulary. We need to just submit and slaughter our entire will and render everything unto God and when we do that, he will bless us. Amen. You pray. Keep praying. I'm getting a little looser. And uh, we have to realize, so that uh, we have to give it all to Him. Do you realize, in a, for us saved individuals, we, when we first got saved, we, there wasn't anything that we wouldn't do for the Lord and there wasn't anything that, that God couldn't bid us to do that we wouldn't jump up and do it. Listen, when we first got saved, God would just give us a little nudge and we'd jump up and testify. Now it takes some dragging us down the bench, don't it? Well, that's about right. Listen, when we totally submit to the authority of God and hold nothing back, that's when He'll take us. And I tell you what, but folks, the Bible says in the book of Samuel that obedience is better than sacrifice. And we find in that text of Scripture, I believe it's in the 15th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel, the Bible says that Samuel went and anointed Saul as king and went and told him, said, I want you to go over here and utterly destroy the Amulacs. He said, for they fought against the children of Israel when they was coming out of Egypt. And Samuel said, oh, I'll go, I'll go. 
And the Bible says that uh, just a little while later, uh, that Saul went over there and began to fight with the Amulek's. And but the Bible says he did not what God commanded him to do, uh, for he spared the king Agag and spared the utmost sheep and the utmost of the flock. Uh, I'm telling you now, folks, uh, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, Saul did not let God absolutely take him and go with him. Uh, I'm telling you now, the Bible says that uh, uh, this Samuel come up to Saul and he said, I've done everything uh, that God told me to do. And Saul, Samuel looked at him and said, well, uh, you did, did you? He said, well, what's the bleeding of the sheep? Uh, I'm telling you now, if we'll absolutely come underneath the authority and obey what God says, He will bless us for it. Amen. Amen. That's the first part of surrendering uh, to the Lord. And this may not be much of a message to lost folks, but uh, I want you to realize that uh, you can get something out of it too. And if uh, the only way that you're ever going to get saved is by surrendering unto God. Uh, you do understand that, right? Uh, you must surrender everything. Uh, you say, well, preacher, does he want my money? Uh, if it becomes a problem between you and God, he wants it. Amen. Uh, does he want my house? If it's a hindrance between you and God, uh, that's what he wants. Amen. Uh, but the Bible goes on and says, that uh, this Samuel begin to tell him uh, that you didn't do what God commanded you to do. And the Bible says that he even saved the king. And the Bible says that Saul wanted Samuel to bless him. And he said that the, the kingdom is rent from your hands now uh, because you've not obeyed the Lord. I'm telling you what, folks, uh, when we don't let God just take us and use us uh, for His glory and His honor, uh, we won't be blessed. Amen. Uh, but if we'll take it and we will obey the Spirit of God. And if God says go, don't ask no questions. Just get up in your car and take off. I'm telling you now, that the first thing to us having a surrendered life to God is let Him take it. Amen. Amen. And, uh, Amen. We find though that uh, a lot of us don't like that part. And we're going to get the parts that everybody don't like through this. I'm just going to be honest with this. There's going to be a part that everybody's holding back on somewhere. And uh, I'm not trying to be ugly when I say this, but uh, most of us live defeated Christian lives because we've not totally surrendered unto God. I'm being honest with us. And I, I'm trying to tell us how we've got to get to a point in our life where we surrender to God. Amen. I'm trying to help us this day today, Brother Clay. I'm not trying to hurt us. But I'm telling you now, though, full we'll utterly just surrender. Just throw the white flag up and give up. And listen, I know folks don't like that word surrender. That means we quit and we lose. And in this walks of life, nobody wants to be a loser. Nobody wants to be on the winning, on the losing team. But I'm telling you now, it's a whole lot harder to surrender than it is to keep up and fight for what you want. Amen. It takes somebody a whole lot stronger to surrender than it does somebody to keep doing what they want to do. I'm telling you that now. So we find first that uh, the Bible says, present your bodies. And uh, that's where he takes us. Now listen, this, this next part, if, uh, if you've never truly been broken by God. I'm talking, I'm not talking about just broken hearted getting saved. I'm talking about truly taking you and breaking you in your Christian life where God, where you're willing to give up everything and willing to submit to all the authority of God unless you've never been broke, you'll never Truly surrender. Amen. Now listen why. Listen, the Bible says a living sacrifice holy and acceptable. Okay? Sometimes, do you know that sometimes God allows things in our life to break us? to get us where He wants us to be? Have you ever been there in your life 
where God absolutely just flipped your world upside down. You did not know which way was up and you had no choice but to fall down on your knees and say, God, forgive me for I'm a man of unclean lips. And you begin to pray out to Him and beg Him to help you. I'm telling you now, folks, that there come a time in my life where God brought me to my lowest and absolutely broke me beyond a shadow of a doubt. And I knew it come from the Lord. He who committed His fault has given me a warning that said if you don't come back I'm going to take something from you I'm telling you now when he took it he got my attention all because he broke me amen, amen. and I've never forgotten that day I've never forgot the time that he absolutely broke me you know what the Bible says in one place it says you'll either fall on the rock and break or the rock will fall on you and grind you to dust. That's what it says. You better find a place that you've been broken. Amen. You need to remember when God absolutely broke you. And when He broke you, you remember how it felt when He took you and made you and put you back up on the pedestal. That's when it gets good, ain't it? I don't care much for the breaking process, but the healing process sure is nice. <laughs> Listen, I broke my leg one day and it hurt like the Dickens. <laughs> I did. I, it hurt now. <laughs> Probably some of the most physical pain that I've ever felt in my life. And, and, and listen, I can tell you all kinds of stories about it, but uh, they, they shot me with six cc's of morphine before they even got me to the hospital out of the ambulance, and it never stopped hurting. It never helped one bit, but as soon as I got in that hospital, that doctor said, you hurt, and I said, I'm dying. And he took my blood pressure, and it was way up, and he said, shoot him, full, shoot him 10 cc's of morphine and shoot it fast. He shot that thing, and I said, whoop, and uh, leave me in this side. Listen, I felt some relief in. And, and listen, why it was broken and while it was healing it hurt like the dickens but now that it's well and fine I can walk and jump and I don't feel no pain from it oh because I've been healed amen, amen. amen. but when God will break you it'll break you <sighs> see most of our problems is we don't want to be broken ain't that right that might hurt too much, preacher. <laughs> you better find a place that hurts. Because if you're ever totally going to totally surrender unto God, you've got to find a place that you've been broken. You've got to listen. When God broke me that day, Brother Clay, now I've not lived perfect. Please don't get me wrong. I've not lived perfect. But after thinking about that, boy, I sure did start surrendering a lot of my life over to the Lord. I'm talking about a saved man. I'm talking about a saved man. I wasn't even a preacher. Preacher, you're supposed to surrender your life. You're a preacher. You're a pastor. Hush your mouth. You're a Christian. You're supposed to be surrendered as much as I am. Amen. Amen. That's right. You know that you ain't no better than me and I ain't no better than you? You do know that, right? We're all on level ground. Amen. When we get the glory, it's level ground. Calvary flattened it out. We are all the same thing. I'm telling you now, if you want to surrender everything to God, you got to get broken. Amen. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. What's he got to break? He's got to break our wheel. Well, here we go again. You know what most folks are? Most folks, it's going to take me an hour to preach this. You know what most folks say? I want what I want. You ought to quit it. Why don't you just quit it? You, you ain't surrendered unto God if you're wanting what you want. You've got to have your will broken and say, God, it's not my will I want, but it's your will I want. First, you've got to have your will broken. He's a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Holy. Holy. 
Can I say this real quick? We're, we, we, we're living in a time today that uh, people wink at sin. We're living in a day and time where folks have no fear just to snuggle right up to it and climb into bed with it. It won't bother me, preacher. You know what? It ought to break our hearts when sin sets up into our lives. It ought to break our hearts when sin sets up in the church member's life. It ought to break our hearts when sin sets up in our community. It ought to break our hearts when sin sets up in the state of Alabama. And it ought to break our hearts when sin sets up in this nation. But we're not very broken about it. Listen to me. We're not very broken about it. Sin ought to bother us. You want to be holy? Get the sin out of your life. That goes back to being not your will but God's will, don't it? Yeah. And the uh, Bible talks about, what is it? Four, three, four, five chapters, something like that, in the book of Ruth. I, I guess he broke Naomi, didn't he? He broke her. Bible says that her name Naomi meant pleasant. Is that, am I right on that? Is that what the book, is that the name Naomi meant? It was pleasant. And the Bible says that the, there was a drought within the land, if I'm not bad wrong, and a, that, that her husband, Elimelech, and her two sons, went to another country, to the Moabs, and, uh, because they thought it was better over there. And, uh, well, Lord in mercy, I could, I could preach right there an hour, I think. <laughs> I see so much in that. <laughs> and, uh, but the Bible says that Elimelech died, and, and, and her sons married, and, and, and then there's both of her sons died, is what the Bible says. And she went back to, to Benjamin, to, to Bethlehem, Judah, Went back to Bethlehem. And uh, they saw her coming from afar off. Said, look, there's Naomi. And they said, oh, she said, don't call me Naomi. I left full. But I come back empty. She said, call me Myra. Which means bitter. She was shit. Listen, God, God broke her to get her back home. <laughs> Didn't he? Listen, it costed her her husband's life. and her, I'm not saying, listen... The Bible don't say this, but I can just kind of see this in this. And, and I want you to understand something, that uh, you're liable to cost, it's liable to cost you the thing that you love the most Amen. to break you. Amen. To get you back in the will of the Father. Amen. Amen. She left a godly country and went over to live with the heathens and, the, and, the, and, the, and, and, and all these folks that, 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 that did not know nothing about God. They left a godly place and went over there. And next thing you know, she's coming back empty-handed. I'm telling you now, God will break you if you don't look out. Amen. Amen. But you know what? When she got broke, God, she, she surrendered herself unto God, didn't she? She come back home. And, uh, and the Bible says that uh, Ruth went with her. And uh, we all know the story. How uh, Obed, is, that, his, is that, that that child's name Obed? Obedad? I'm terrible with names. And you think I can remember Bible names? <laughs> I think it was Obed. <clears throat> and the uh, Bible says that Ruth married Boaz and had a, had a child named Obed who was, who was uh, Jesse, who was David's daddy. It was his daddy. <laughs> and... Uh, so, so we find here, though, that, uh, that she, he started restoring unto her because he broke her and she submitted and, and surrendered everything unto God. And uh, so, so what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. That, uh, first, God's got to take you. You've got to be willing to let God take you. And then you've got to find a broken spot in your heart, a place where God just took you down and where you had no choice but to call on God. You remember that time in your life? I remember that time in my life. Preacher, I've never had a true time that God's ever broke me. You better look out. <laughs> Eventually, it's going to come. 
Amen. And you know what? Listen, he doesn't do it to make us to make, to be ugly to us and be mean to us. He does it to help us grow, to help us learn to depend on him. Amen. And the very thing that we love the most is what he'll take out of the way. That's right. See, see, when he broke me, I thought it'd be my business. I thought it'd be money. I thought it'd be this. And I thought it'd be that. It wasn't that. It was my family. That was the most precious thing to me. And I didn't realize it until they was gone. But that was the most precious thing to me. And when he broke me, he took the most precious thing to me. And he took it away from me. And I had no choice but to call on the living God. I knew he was the only one that was going to be able to restore it back to me. I knew that. I knew that I couldn't do anything. We can go to all the counselors, but only God was going to be able to restore it back to me. He broke me that day, Miss Carol. He broke me. And you know what I remember about that time? That uh, I've said it like this, that uh, I lost my daddy 10, 11 years ago. Brenda was just a little baby. And uh, maybe 12 years ago, Brenda was about two, I guess. And uh, at that point in my life, that was the greatest pain I'd ever felt. It was losing my daddy until God took my family from me. And that wasn't nothing compared to that. God will break us to get our attention. I'm, I'm trying to warn you. You want to surrender your life? You want to have a life that's totally dedicated to God? You got to let Him take you. And then when He breaks you, you got to hold on. He's not forgot about you when He breaks you. I promise that. I promise that. We got to get the sin out of our lives. Sin ought to hurt our feelings. No, let me, let me rephrase that. We don't even say anything about sin because we're afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. Sin ought to break our heart. Sin ought to break our heart. The Bible says, which is your reasonable service. You know, there's a, uh, a few things... <laughs> that we ought to be asking God to make us. In the book of Isaiah, and, 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 uh, the book of Jeremiah speaks of it in chapter 18, 17, 18, 19, somewhere around there, about the potter. And uh, Isaiah says this, But now, O Lord, Thou art our Father, we are the clay. Thou art our potter, and we are Thy work in Thy hand. Can I say this real quick? You know, the Bible says that uh, from the dust of the earth he formed man. <laughs> we are the clay. That's what clay's made out of. It's made out of dust. And, uh, but when we become, get to a point, uh, after we've let God take us and he's broke us, he'll put us up on the potter wheel and he'll begin to mold us and shape us. And He'll make us exactly what He wants us to be. And uh, that's what we ought to be trying to do and trying to seek out in our lives. That, uh, God, not what do I want to do, but what do you want me to do, God? But you know what we need? We need some soul winning Christians. But the Bible says that He went and got some of the disciples and He told them, said, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. But we need some folks that's got a zeal about their lives. But we need some folks that's willing to go out and fish for the glory of God. But we need some folks that want to go out and be soul savers. We need some folks to go out and be a beacon in this folks of life that folks might see Jesus in you. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to be made. Amen. I want folks to see the Lord yes. in me. And uh, more than just time when I'm at church. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Most of us just want people to see the Lord on them when they're at church. I want them to see Him when I'm in the world. Amen. My day-to-day -day life, I want Jesus to shine through me. 
And uh, if you don't want that, you need to go back to the first step and let God take you. <laughs> That's right. We need God to, we need Lord, we need to allow the Lord to make him some disciples. Wait, listen, we're a dying breed, you know that? We're a dying breed. And, uh, I'm not just talking about the style of worship, but I'm talking about Christians in general. Do, do you know that the, the, that the Muslims is the fastest growing religion in this world? Somebody that worships a dead God. Well, maybe they don't, but they say it comes through somebody. They call him Allah or something. You ask Michael about that stuff. He knows much more about that than I do. But I know this one, that unless you fall underneath the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven which men must be saved. If you think you're going to get it through Allah, you've missed the mark. You're not getting it through Allah or whatever his name is. What, what's that guy's name? It's not Allah. That's who they call God, ain't it? Muhammad, that's it. You're not going to get it through Muhammad. They're serving somebody that's dead. We're serving somebody that's alive. That's right. And he's well. And he wants to help us. And he wants, you know what he wants most of all? For us to surrender everything unto him. But most of us don't want to do that. I'm being honest. We don't like the fact of submitting to let God have... You know, what, when we, you know when we come to worship, we don't just come to sing and to testify and to hear the preaching. We come that God might use us. And if you're not willing to be used of God, you've not surrendered. Am I right? Am I right? <clears throat> you know what we ought to ask God to do? What we'll ask Him to make us faithful. I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings here. What we'll ask God to make us faithful to the church. We ought to ask God to make us faithful in our prayer life. We ought to ask God to make us faithful in our study life. How many of us, listen, I'm, I'm being, listen, I fall short on this. How many of us are really faithful enough when we pray two or three times a day? How many of us are faithful enough when we pick up the Word of God and study at least once a day? Boy, we fall short on that one, don't we? I, I'm being honest. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me too. We need to let God make us faithful to the church, to Bible study, to prayer, to anything else. Now listen. When a football game comes on, we'll be sure we go to the football game. Won't we? Alabama, Auburn, all, hey, we're, we're going to be in front of that TV on Saturday afternoon if we ain't got tickets to go to the stadium. Don't let it be a late game, though, preacher, because I won't make it to church for Sunday school. Listen to me. You've got to be willing to let God make you. We can't do it on our own. When we utterly destroy our will and just surrender everything to God, now you're talking about victory. You're talking about victory now. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm trying to wrap it up. We need to... Uh, we need God to make us some strong Christians to stand for the truth. We need, to, we need God to make us some strong Christians to stand for the truth. And not worry about if I hurt your feelings or not. Worry about what thus saith the word of God. Amen. 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 We've got enough of the worrying about I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings if I say something to them. Now listen, I'm not trying to tell you to go off and be ugly. That's not what I'm telling you. 
But most of the time, we're afraid to say anything to anybody because we might hurt their feelings. Yeah. Amen. We need to stand on thus saith the word of God. Amen. The Bible says that the, that the word of God is sharp. It's a two-edged sword. Piercing the, 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 the bone and the marrow. And, and, and listen, I, I can't quote that scripture, but it says, even the very intents of the heart. You ain't got to be ugly to somebody to make them mad. You just tell them the truth 99% of the time, they'll get mad at you. Amen. That's about right. It's about right. He says that uh, it is your reasonable service. When we're willing to get back on the potter's wheel and let him just make us and mold us into not what we think we should be and not what we think we want to be, but be what God makes us to be, then you're living in a surrendered life. Our biggest problem is we don't want to surrender. The Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Submit yourself to yield over to, to give in, surrender, give it up. It ain't about you and it ain't about me. Who's it about? Him. It's about Him. Miss Carol, come with the verse of a song that may have been scattered. Take me, break me, make me. You've got to be willing to let the Lord take you. And if He's never broken you in your life, look out, He will one day. And I, I'm not trying to scare you when I say that. But there will come a time in your life where you've hit rock bottom, whether it's because family problems, financial problems, physical ailments, something, something will come up in your life that you'll do nothing but throw your hands up and say, God, it's you. I can't do it no more. When you absolutely just give up. I'm not talking about give up, but I'm talking about quit fighting. How about that? Is that better? When you absolutely just quit fighting against the Lord. When you quit fighting against Him, He'll begin to make you. He'll begin to shape you. He'll begin to put you where He wants you at. You want utter victory in your life? You must surrender. Amen. We've got too many Christians in this life that are saved. I'm talking about saved. That have never truly surrendered under the authority of God. I once was one of those Christians. I'm being honest with you. I once was there. You know where my life revolves around now? The Lord and the church. That's my life revolves. I don't care if I, I don't care how tired I am. I still got to go. And it's not because I'm a pastor. I, I don't care most of the time how much I'm hurting. I still got to go. I'm not being ugly. I've surrendered everything unto God. I don't live perfect. I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. But I want Him to make me what He wants me to be. Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Have you truly surrendered everything in your life? <laughs>